Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at table valued functions and more specifically inline table valued functions. Now I have here a query window that already has a template for creating a function. And I got this far by going to our functions folder and then going to table valued functions, right clicking and then saying I wanted a new inline table valued function that brought up our function create um, query. And as you can see, it is pretty much the same template if you're used to creating a scalar value function. There are a few differences, so we'll just go ahead and create a function as we explore the differences. Now, the first thing that we want to start doing is replacing the blocks of text in between angle brackets with the appropriate syntax. So the first thing we want to do is remove this angle bracket for the function name and put in the name of our function. So I'm going to say grade range. So this function, and I'm actually just going to put in a description so that we know what we're working with. So our function today is to return grades between two values. So the name of the function is grade range. And if we want to return between two values, then we need two parameters defined. So they're already letting us know that we probably need two parameters. In this example, they have one suggestion of int and one suggestion of char, but of course it's our function, so we can do what we want. So I'm going to define the first parameter as the first grade. And the first grade would have a data type of float. And then because I have another parameter, I have a comma, and then I go on and define the second parameter, which would be second grade. And it also has a data type of float. So what this function will be doing is accepting a grade of some value and then another grade of another value. And then the expectation is that we're going to return a table. So notice that the return type is already defined for us in the scalar function. We had to tell it what return type we wanted in a table valued um, function. It is going to be a table for obvious reasons. All right. So it's a return type of a table, meaning it's returning a result set. So our result set that we intend to return is a result set for all grades between the first grade that was passed in and the second one that was passed in. Next, they ask us to define the select query that will return the data set that is being requested. So I'm going to write a query that is going to return all grades from our enrollments table that fall in between or in the range of whatever value is provided here is in first grade and whatever value is provided in second grade. So I'm going to say select grade from enrollments. And then there are two ways to write the filter. So obviously I need to filter out the grades and I need a where clause to do that. And there are two ways to write this where clause. So I'm going to do the one that you probably are thinking of where I'm going to say where grade is greater than or equal to, and then we can say first grade and grade is less than and or equal to second grade. So right there, we would have facilitated facilitated a range. We're selecting all the grades from enrollments, but then we're filtering all the grades where the values that are being returned in um, must be greater than or equal to whatever value came in as first grade, and they must also be less than or equal to whatever came in as second grade. Now that's the first way to write the query and there's nothing wrong with that, it's perfect. But then SQL gives us a keyword called between that also helps us to accomplish this kind of logic with less code. So I can actually write right under this line where grade and then say, between the so we see where grade between value one and value two so value one would be our first grade and then we have the keyword and 
and then value two would be our second grade. So these two statements work pretty much the same way. It, it's up to you whichever one you find easier and more intuitive. There's no problem. You pick whichever one is better for you and you use it. So for this video, I'm going to press along, press ahead with the between statements. So I'm saying select grade from enrollments where grade between the first value that was provided as a parameter and the second value that was provided as a parameter. And that's literally it. That's all there is. It's really just writing a query. And some people think of table valued functions as parameterized views because we talked about views where a view is just executing a query and returning what we want to return so in this situation we actually get to pass in parameters which can be dynamic we don't know what the user may want to see at the time but we're facilitating their desire by giving them the parameter and then we just make sure that we craft the query in a way that it returns data relative to the parameters that they want all right so i'm going to just execute this and it's going to go ahead and create the function, which I can validate by going to table valid functions, refreshing and expanding that folder if needs be. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new query folder and use my use school statement. And then I'm going to select and remember that we have to say DBO dot and then the function name. So I'm going to say grade range. And then I need to pass in two parameters because this function was defined to take two parameters. So one grade and second grade. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to find all failing students and the pass mark for our school is 50. So that means anybody between one and 49 is failing. So then if I wanted to see the grade range, I can see one comma 49. And then when I execute that, it does a select statement and then it's saying it cannot find grade range. All right, so I wrote that wrong and I'm sorry about that. What we should do since it's a table valid function, so I was attempted to call it like a scalar valid function. I need a table valid function. So I actually need to say select star from and then the function. And then once we do that, we get back our desired results. So once again, if it's a table valued function, we need to call this function as if we were dealing with a table, but then we get to pass in parameters that implicitly based on the definition of our function will handle whatever complex query in the background. So if I wanted to see all of the students who had or all of the grades that fell within the passing category. So all passing students and a pass mark is 50. That means I want anybody with 50 and 100, right? So if I execute this, then I'm going to see that I do have quite a few students. I have seven students with grades that are passing and then I have five that are failing. Now, obviously I'm only returning grade and there's no limitation on the columns that can be returned. So if I wanted to upgrade this query a bit, I can actually go back, right click it, go to uh, modify, and then that would generate the alter function command for me. And then I can modify this query to bring back other columns, do inner joins and bring back as much data on the students and their grades as I need to. So you can go ahead and write this function and then maybe modify it or create another function that has a bit more details based on what you think would be necessary for somebody to view based on the data set that we have.